the sessions resolution. Yeah. Oh, right. And we're back live with the House Rules Committee. You see uh, Chairman David Dreyer there on your right to his uh, to his right. And on the left of our screen, that's Ranking Member Louise Slaughter of New York. Just back underway, live coverage here on C-SPAN 2. It will include all of these items. And we're trying right now to ensure that if there are any other items that we do have a flexibility to address them. Mr. Hastings very correctly raised an issue. And again, I would, as I said at the outset, welcome any recommendations that you all have on uh, ways in which we can address this but we'll have the opportunity to do that once we make the uh, you know the motion in order that will uh, allow that to happen so I, I appreciate that what we're going to do now is we're going to proceed with the original jurisdiction markup of H res 9 which is the uh, measure that I introduced uh, calling for the committees to proceed with their work on replacements so let me uh, call on Gentlewoman from Grandfather Community, North Carolina, Ms. Fox, for uh, a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the committee report the resolution HRS 9, instructing certain committees to report legislation replacing the job-killing health care law with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Fox. And you've uh, heard the motion. Any discussion on we that have. amendment? We I know that the members on this side do want to discuss... Uh, HRAS 9, Slaughter, I, uh, Mr. McGovern? Yeah, no, I, I would just... Well, I'll, I'll call... Did you, did you not want to offer any... Mrs. Slaughter, did you want to offer any comments on it? No, not okay, really. Okay, then, then, to yield then to I'll, Mr. Uh, I, I, Mr. I'll recognize Mr. McGovern. You know, I, I would just say, as I have said repeatedly all day, I mean, basically what you are doing is replacing real protections for people um, with a piece of paper. That's what, uh, that's what this bill is. I mean, that's what this resolution is, a piece of paper. It doesn't give anybody anything. In fact, um, um, it's, it's, it's a press release, and I, uh, I strongly oppose it. Well, um, any, anyone else seek recognition? Mr. Polis? Yeah, you know, I, um, certainly the, the language in there uh, um, says that the various committees shall each report to the House legislation. Um, I'm not, you know, quite sure what the... the the penalty is or, or the ability of this committee to say that they, they must do that. Um, certainly many of the ideas um, are ones that have broad bipartisan support. There's a few that are probably debatable, but the vast majority of them have broad support. Um, I think that the issue that Mr. McGovern raised, and I tend to agree, and for, for that reason um, I'll be opposing uh, House Resolution 9, is that it doesn't have the certainty that we had with regard to the, uh, the bill that's in place. And we certainly wish these committees well in accomplishing these things, but uh, we all know the legislative process. We all know that the committee chairs might not see things the same way as our esteemed chairman uh, and our esteemed committee. Uh, and we worry about this because there's real lives that are that are being impacted by these. And the gentleman is absolutely correct, and uh, I, I agree with the assessment. We know that there are lives at stake here, and it is critically important that we do everything that we can to ensure that every American has access to quality health insurance. I will tell you this. Uh, I have had discussions with the new chairs of these committees. Mr. Camp, who is the new chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Smith, who is the new chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and we had before us today Mr. Upton, the new chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee, and Mr. Klein, the new chair of the Education and the Workforce Committee. Uh, there has been a very strong commitment made by the Speaker, and I have made it by authoring this legislation, this resolution, HRES 9, that we will insist that the committees proceed with their action. And we obviously can't predetermine the outcome, but as you see here, I mean, I have made, and we have a record, a, a commitment to uh, ensure that committees adequately <clears throat> address those um, issues that have come forward. And so I can say that it's not a press release. This is going to be a resolution that will be passed by the United States House of Representatives if we move forward. And um, I uh, urge the adoption of HRES 9. There's no further discussion. The uh, vote occurs on the motion of the gentlewoman from Grandfather Community. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Pay no. the chair. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The motion. Call, please. Certainly. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Fox. Aye. Mr. Woodall. Aye. Mr. Nugent. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Webster. Aye. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Aye. And the clerk will report the total. Uh, six, six yeas and four 
And the motion is agreed to. And now we will proceed for to consideration of uh, the rule that will allow us to consider both H.R. 2 as well as H.R.E.S. 9. And uh, the chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Grandfather Community again for her motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the committee grant a closed rule providing consideration of H.R. 2, the repealing the job killing health care law act. The rule waives all points of order against consideration of H.R. 2. The rule provides that the amendment printed in Part A of this report shall be considered as adopted. The rule provides that the bill as amended shall be considered as read. The rule waives all points of order against H.R. 2 as amended. The rule provides seven hours of debate with 30 minutes equally divided and controlled by the majority leader and minority leader or their respective designees. 90 minutes equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Education and the Workforce, 90 minutes equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Energy and Commerce, 90 minutes equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Ways and Means, 40 minutes equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on the Budget. 40 minutes equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on the Judiciary, and 40 minutes equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Small Business. The rule provides one motion to recommit H.R. 2 with or without instructions. Further, the rule provides for consideration of H.R.E.S. 9, instructing certain committees to report legislation replacing the job-killing health care law under a structured rule. The rule provides that HRS 9 shall be considered as read. The rule provides one hour debate on HRS 9 equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the committee on rules or their respective designees. The rule makes in order the amendment to HRS 9 printed in part B of the report if offered by Representative Matheson of Utah or his designee which shall be considered as read and shall be debatable for 10 minutes, equally divided and controlled by the proponent and an opponent. The rule waives all points of order against the amendment printed in Part B of the report. Lastly, the rule provides for consideration of a resolution if offered by the majority leader or his designee relating to the status of certain actions taken by members elect under a closed rule. The rule provides four minutes of debate equally divided and controlled by the majority leader and minority leader or their respective designees. You've heard the motion of the uh, gentlewoman uh, from Grandfather Community. Let me uh, just provide a little um, explanation here. Uh, as you know, we last summer uh, began making a commitment there would be a straight up or down vote on the issue of repeal. And uh, when it comes to HRES 9, we have made an order, a Democratic amendment, Mr. Matheson's amendment, to uh, add a provision dealing with the, uh, the doc fix, the so-called doc fix, which would be uh, adding item number 13. There will be a debate on that. Uh, and so we do provide a, an opportunity for him to be heard on that. And then, of course, the other provision is the one dealing with uh, the issue that led us to recess earlier today. So are there any amendments to the... Um, to the uh, motion of the gentlewoman, Ms. Yes, Slaughter? Yes, I do. Uh, we're distressed. I think I can speak for the four of us. Uh, that after dozens of people came up here all day over 12 hours uh, with very serious substantive germane amendments, the repeal bill, uh, that you've blocked those amendments, but you are self-executing, adopting without a separate vote the amendment by Mr. Cantor, who did not testify today in support of his proposal. And after listening uh, to Mr. Van Hollen's testimony, I understand you would want to allow a separate vote on the Cantor Amendment, but it uh, doesn't make it right. And so I therefore move the rule be amended to strike the Cantor Amendment, which would allow the House to pretend that the $230 billion cost of this bill does not increase the deficit and therefore does not exist. Thank you very much for the amendment. You've heard the gentlewoman's amendment. Let me just uh, explain that uh, Mr. Van Hollen recognized in his testimony when this issue, when you brought this issue forward uh, to him, that um, this is obviously 
uh, necessary procedure. This would be absolutely non-compliant with PAYGO were it not uh, made an order, and that's the reason that we have chosen to make it an order. So I'm going to urge my colleagues to vote no on the slaughter amendment. Well, if that if there's heard, further discussion, of course I'm happy yes, to recognize you. the gentleman. Uh, Mr. Van Hollen made it perfectly clear that the danger here is what passed yesterday in the rules of the House, and that this just will compound it. And I think, for again, if I can speak for all of us, uh, the idea that we would even contemplate putting $230 billion worth of deficit, hiding it away somewhere, is important to all of us. Vote occurs on the slaughter amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. 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 Pin the chair. The noes have it. The noes have it. Roll the call, is. please. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Fusion. No. Okay. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Ms. Slaughter. Uh, uh, aye. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk will report the totals. 48 And the motion is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mrs. Slaughter. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, mean, I move that we report an open rule for the consideration of H.R. 2 and H.R.E.S. 9. You've heard the motion of the gentlewoman. Uh, any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the slaughter amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. 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 I'm paying the chair. The noes have it. The noes have it. The motion is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Foley. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. The clerk will report the total. 48 And the motion is not agreed to. Further amendments. Mrs. Slaughter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 15 by Ms. Songus of Massachusetts to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not permit insurance companies to discriminate against women. You've heard the motion of the gentleman. Any further discussion? Mr. Not the Chairman. vote members in the slaughter map? Oh, Mr. yes, Mr. Hastings, of course. Mr. Chairman, there are a lot of things, as all of us have said, to like and or to dislike in this measure. Um, when I began today, I um, used the opportunity, and I thank my colleagues uh, for letting me do so, uh, to briefly um, memorialize, in a way, um, an exemplary American that died uh, last night, Catherine Kelly, Catherine Crowley Kelly. Kelly. Catherine was, as all of us are, passionate. But she had an unwavering uh, support um, uh, for civil rights and women's rights, gay rights, and progressive undertakings. I showed Mr. Polis a moment ago uh, recent information that I received uh, 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 from her family that reflected her desire in lieu of flowers uh, uh, that contributions be made to the NAACP and the National Organization uh, uh, for Women. I raise that for the reason that Ms. Spears' um, our provision that Ms. Slaughter uh, has offered that I fully support um, deals with one of society's most egregious um, uh, uh, discriminatory um, uh, measures, and that is discrimination against um, uh, women. In a, 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 I, 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 for the life of me, don't understand how an insurance company would uh, deny a woman coverage. And most of us have uh, women relatives uh, that have been touched um, uh, uh, by uh, the disease of breast cancer. Um, my cousin that I was with um, at, at Christmas time had a double mastectomy. And it was and continues to be heartrending. Um, uh, to all of us, I don't understand how an insurance company could say um, that if a woman had a cesarean um, a, a section, C-section, um, birth, um, and uh, I hope my daughter doesn't. I proudly announce that my first grandchild is en route. Um, 
She notified me yesterday that the sonogram reflects that it's going to be a girl child. And uh, I'm delighted uh, 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 about that. Great news. But how can, how can any of you sit here knowing what we have done in this society in discriminating against women, including beginning this great founding of this country by excluding them totally from the opportunity to participate in activities that were routine for men. And to then vote on something and vote no, that it's okay um, when we have fixed some of it, uh, it's okay to repeal it. And I hear you when you say, and I believe you said to her, that we'll take it up in um, um, the process as we go forward on House Resolution 9 and the committee process and what have you. But I bet you, um, uh, for general purposes, we'll be right back here with this discussion. And we shouldn't be having this discussion. We should all be lifting women up. You and I have traveled to societies, Mr. Chairman, where women have to walk behind men. Oh, you and I were in Iraq, and we saw women, you and I, with our eyes, standing together, women having to go behind different um, um, uh, undertakings and walking miles uh, to come to the city that you led the Codell on, and I was uh, uh, there, and undertaking all sorts of things around the world. America ought to be way ahead of everybody else in the world um, when it comes uh, to protecting uh, women's rights. Uh, so I strongly uh, support this measure, and uh, I just simply uh, don't believe uh, that you want to repeal something that's going to cause women to pay 48% more in premium costs than men. Catherine would be opposed to that, and my mom would be raising hell if she would. Well, thank you very much. And let me say the gentleman is absolutely right. We don't want to do anything uh, to uh, undermine women's rights, and we are absolutely committed to that. And I, my condolences to you uh, with the loss. Congratulations uh, uh, about uh, soon to become a grandfather. And uh, I think that is terrific. But you were right, and I very much appreciate the gentleman recognizing that this will be one of those issues that we hope very much it gets a full airing and consideration, and I can assure you that, uh, that it will, but we also will have an opportunity to discuss it here in this committee. So I'm not going to be voting no against women's rights. I'm going to be voting yes for us to ensure that the committee process has an opportunity to uh, address this and ensure that women's rights are recognized. Mr. Vote occurs Mr. on the Mr. slaughter Chairman. amendment. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Mr. McGovern. I mean, I find it a little bit puzzling that you, on one hand you're saying that uh, we all care about this issue that Mr. Hastings talks so eloquently about, but yet we're about, you're about to move forward on a bill that will repeal it. I mean, it, we've already had hearings on this. We've already had a full airing on this issue. I think the consensus, I, I would like to think, even with the new majority, is that, you know, um, that, uh, you know, that we shouldn't go backwards, that uh, uh, we, should, we should make sure that women's rights are protected uh, in this process, that people don't get discriminated against for pre-existing conditions because they... Uh, of their victims of domestic violence. So if we're all together on this, then why are we going to repeal it? We've had the hearings, we've had the airing, it's over, we've decided this issue. Now you're repealing it. So, I mean, it's, it's just a little bit of a puzzlement to us on, on this side of the aisle that, uh, you know, why you, on one hand you say you, you care about this, you share all, you know, our, our views on these issues, but here we are repealing it. Um, I think uh, Mr. Hastings made some very important points. Well, I think Mr. Hastings made some great points as well, and I will say that I am absolutely committed to doing everything that we can to ensure that we address the issue. And, uh, but you're repealing and it right now. We are repealing, yeah. Yeah. We are repealing, repealing the $2.7 trillion and these measure that passed, and, these and there was a very strong, and we obviously don't want to do anything to undermine the rights of women, and we are determined to ensure that. And so I'm going to urge a no vote on the slaughter amendment. But yes, Mr. Hastings. You do understand. Now, let, me, let me make it clear. I think we've wasted 12 hours. Today. We've wasted 12 hours? Yeah, I do. I don't believe that we've wasted 12 I, I hours. I do for the reason that you and I know that this will never become the law of the land 
the repeal of the measure. Now, there How do you know that? How do you know that? Largely for the reason that you and I know the Senate. And uh, we also know gonna... that the president, who has this as central to uh, uh, the undertakings that he put forward, uh, is more likely than not to veto a measure that came to him that repealed this measure, and that those of us in the House of Representatives that haven't lost our complete minds would vote to uphold that veto. Now that said, in light of that, the minute that it would become law, and what you are saying is that you want it to become law, so if it became law, and I'm hoping that you're hoping I'm right, that it doesn't, then women would be in the position immediately. And your desire would have them to be there, and all you got to do is just strip this out. That's all. And let it go forward. I feel more about this than I do any measure in this whole of health care. And I didn't talk on the debate. I didn't talk on the rule. I didn't talk in the, the general debate. Uh, but I, I find it a nap uh, that we would go forward on this particular measure. And I urge my colleagues to give careful consideration uh, to what you're doing uh, in carrying our country back. Thank you. Would Thank you, you yield to me, like Mr. Slaughter, would I, I would. I'd like to recognize you, Mrs. Slaughter. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me assure all of you that the women in this country know about this. Uh, so your daughters, your wives, your mothers, your mothers-in-law, everybody's going to know that what you try to do is push them back into that place where they could be beaten to a pulp and not be given insurance to be taken, having that taken care of. And all women are going to know that you have decided that they could pay 48% more for their premiums. And how are all these women going to get to know? Because we're going to tell them. So repeal it or not, with the fact that this discussion is taking a place again, to put women back down in a second class situation is not going to go unnoticed in this country. And I, I would like to say to you that those of us who have fought since 1970 trying to move ahead the rights of the women in the United States of America to try to reach uh, those uh, attained by women in other countries are not going to let this slip. So take that to the bank with you. Uh, women in America will know about it. Vote occurs on the Slaughter Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no, no. And pay the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it. Roll call. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. Hastings. Yes. Mr. Polis. Aye. Mr. Dryer. No. And the motion is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mrs. Slaughter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, excuse chair? me. The clerk hasn't reported the total. Uh-huh. Four years, six minutes. And the, the motion is not agreed to. Mrs. Slaughter. I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers, amendment number 16 by Ms. Loretta Sanchez of California, to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not permit insurance companies to rescind an individual's health coverage due to illness or impose annual and lifetime limits as prohibited under the Affordable Care Act. You've heard the motion of the gentlewoman. Any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the slaughter amendment. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. They no. pin the chair of the no's have it. The no's have it. Roll call. Motion is not agreed to. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Newman. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Ms. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. McGovern. Yes. Mr. Jason. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk will report the total. And the motion is not agreed to. There are further amendments. Yes. Mr. McGovern. Mr. Chairman, I, um, I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers, amendment number 26 by Ms. Edwards of Maryland, to ensure that repealing the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act shall not take effect un uh, unless and until the Director of the Office of Management and Budget, in consultation with the Director of the Congressional Budget Office, certifies to the Congress that the repeals affected by such section will not restore the ability of insurance companies to impose unreasonable premium increases as protected against under the Patient Protection and Affordable, uh, Affordable Care Act. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from uh, Worcester. Those in favor will say aye. Those in favor will say no. Aye. The chair the no no's have it. As for roll call, Mr. Chairman. First call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Well. No. Mr. Newton. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. Governor. Aye. Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. 
Clerk reports total. And the motion is not agreed to. There further amendments, yes. Mr. McGovern. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 27 by Mr. Tierney of Massachusetts. To ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take effect unless and until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not restore the ability of insurance companies to divert premium dollars from patients into insurance company profits and executive perks as prohibited under Section 1001 of the Affordable Care Act. You've heard the motion of the gentleman. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the McGovern Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Chair, the I ask for the roll, a roll call. Roll. Ms. Foss. No. Mr. Will. No. Mr. Newton. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. Casey. Aye. Mr. Foley. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk reports total. Four days, six nine. And the motion is not agreed to. The further amendments, Mr. Yeah. McGovern. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers amendment number 14 by Ms. Castor of Florida to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not permit insurance companies to deny coverage to individuals due to a pre-existing condition as prohibited under the Affordable Care Act. For the motion of the gentleman, any further discussion? Not the vote occurs in the uh, McGovern Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those, no, no. Been as for roll call. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. McGovern. Aye. Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Polis. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk reports total. Four yeas, six nays. And the motion is not agreed to. The further amendments, Mr. McGovern. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the rule in order to make uh, make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 17 by Mr. Larson of Washington to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Health Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not eliminate health insurance coverage for young adults under 26 who are otherwise eligible for coverage under their parents' plan as a result of the Affordable Care Act. You've heard the motion of the gentleman. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, yeah. Mr. McGovern. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people uh, have come up to me and told me uh, how much they appreciate this particular provision, how many parents have come up to me whose children have... Uh, are in college or just got out of college, can't find a job, um, and they and, and they can and still enjoy the security of good health insurance if their parents so desire. Um, I read earlier a letter from a, a woman in my district from Holden, Massachusetts, who uh, who talked about this provision um, in the context of her son who uh, graduated from uh, college and was diagnosed with cancer, uh, and because he had a pre because of a pre-existing condition. Um, he probably wouldn't be able to get health care. Um, but yet, because of this provision, uh, and as well as the provisions that ban uh, discrimination on pre-existing conditions, he has health care. Um, you know, there are millions of people who are impacted by this, and, um, and I would like to think that uh, we could, you know, I mean, in the spirit of coming together, as you, as you mentioned before, that we could actually agree on some of this stuff. Um, we've had hearings on this. We have aired this. I mean, I don't think this is terribly controversial. Um, why in the world would you want to repeal it? So I would urge uh, a, a yes vote on, on this amendment, and um, I hope my colleagues on the other side of the will join with us. Well, let me just say this is obviously an issue that is going to be addressed as we proceed with the consider of HRES 9 that will allow for a but you're full going to repeal opportunity. It. But you're to, going to repeal to, it. To you're that. going to eliminate Thank it. Thank you very much. And maybe, we'll, maybe a committee chair will deal with it. Maybe Any further we'll discussion? Not the vote occurs on the McGovern Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Those aye. opposed, no, no. I Maybe ask for a roll call vote, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Collier. Mr. Fox. No. Mr. Wolf. No. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Casey. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Casey. 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 Aye. Mr. Casey
what I, uh, uh, this isn't uh, 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 a bad question, it's just a, a, right. a suggestion. Um, I didn't um, have the time, uh, nor did I direct staff, and I could have, um, uh, to go to the record to make sure uh, that the constitutional proviso uh, was noted. And I understand the rules package passed as it did. But as we go forward, particularly here, it would not be unwarranted for majority and minority staff or to provide us with the constitutional provision. Itself. Well, I appreciate, I, I appreciate the gentleman's yeah. uh, comments, and I will say absolutely right. It does apply to H.R. 2, but uh, simple resolutions, as H.R.S. 9 is, are not uh, included under the provision. But I appreciate the, yeah. the It's in the thoughts. record, but, but no, no, if I, I ask right now, our colleague, I appreciate that. what is the constitutional provision? I appreciate There are that. at least six of us in here that don't know. I appreciate uh, that. that. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Um, uh, amendment number 23, offered by Mr. Thompson of Mississippi to ensure that repealing the Patient Protection and Affordable uh, Care Act shall not take effect unless and until the Director of the Office of Management and Budget, in consultation with the Director of the Con Congressional Budget Office, certifies to the Congress uh, that the repeals are uh, affected by such uh, 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 section or uh, affected by such section will not undermine access to primary care. You've heard the uh, motion of the gentleman? Very briefly, discussion. Oh, Mr. yes, Mr. Hastings. Mr. Chairman, repealing this act will take away support for community health centers, which are critical sources of care for millions of Americans in every state and territory. Um, in my lifetime, almost every president um, has addressed at some point uh, the needs um, uh, uh, for uh, people in America uh, uh, to have access, um, and the community health centers were, um, were in awe uh, a way we heard eloquent testimony from our colleague from Illinois, Mr. Davis, who um, uh, pointed to the fact that some of them either were uh, employees of health centers or in some measure, um, involved as was I and perhaps others of you. Um, and knowing um, uh, some of us come from a district similar to the one I'm privileged to represent that's urban and rural, and I suffer with my uh, 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 friends in the Glades to believe um, uh, that this kind of program uh, will not continue. Now, that isn't all it does. Uh, if you repeal this, you taking away uh, medical students and primary care providers <coughs> loan payments so that they can work in some of those underserved uh, communities in Belle Glade, uh, for example, or in certain of our other areas. Uh, and the impact of it, repeal, will eliminate $11 billion in support for community health centers over the next five years. And it would eliminate one and a half billion dollars in spending for National Service Corps. Whenever we ultimately get it all together, we're going to need more doctors, we're going to need more nurses, we're going to need more home health care people, and um, it just doesn't make sense to me. And, and nobody here today has made it make sense for me that under the law as it presently exists, we, all of us in this room as taxpayers, have already provided $320 million in grants. Now, if you're in a program and you just got yourself a $400,000 grant, some cases I cited in Florida, as much as $7.2 million, and you've made contracts and you've done other things, you're getting ready to be impacted. And I, I just know y'all don't mean that. I know you don't mean um, that the doc fix um, should be eliminated um, uh, for uh, private uh, primary care providers. So I'm going to rely upon your now what I perceive as rote recitation, uh, Mr. Chairman, to the effect that we're going to take care of this later. Well, we took care of it in the last session of Congress, and there's no reason for us to have to take care of it later. Any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the Hastings Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Paying the chair the nose. I ask for a roll call. call. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Newton. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Weatherford. No. Mr. Slaughter. 
Aye. 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 Chairman. No. Clerk will report the totals. Four yeas, six nays. And the motion is not agreed to. There further amendments. Yes, Mr. Hastings. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 30, offered by Mr. Connolly of Virginia, to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take uh, effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not increase taxes for moderate income or low income individuals or families including through the elimination of tax credits for health care premiums as provided under the Affordable uh, Care Act. And I do have a very brief comments with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Any further? You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any further discussion? Yes. Well, uh, I, I, you'd been recognized. Well, I, I thank you. So further discussion. And I will be more than brief in this regard. Ms. Moore from Wisconsin, our colleague, was here. And I can't imagine um, a more eloquent statement in support of, as she put it, near poor people who are working regularly. I shall not go further into it, Mr. Chairman. I would ask uh, anyone who is interested uh, that they reference uh, the testimony of Gwendolyn Moore in the Rules Committee on January 6th. I think uh, that they would find uh, that Mr. Connolly's motion from Virginia, as supported by Ms. Moore, was more than worthy of being made in order by this committee. Any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the Hastings Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it. The motion is not agreed to. There are further amendments? Moore. Mr. Mr. Amendment. Mr. Hastings. <laughs> that's who I am, and that's who I'll be with you for. Yeah. Two years with the contract uh, I have now. Loving every Mr. minute Chairman. of it. I know you are. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 20 offered by my colleague Ted Deutsch of Florida to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that repeal will not imperil Medicare and raise costs on seniors, and specifically that repeal will not a raise drug costs to seniors and people with disabilities by reopening the Medicare prescription drug donut hole, B, eliminate free or preventive health coverage, um, and C, increase the incidence of fraud and abuse. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any further discussion? Very briefly, uh, and I'll yield to uh, Mr. McGovern uh, after I make the very brief comment that um, in Florida, and I believe in California as well, Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, we are rife with fraud. And all of us, I don't believe there's a man or a woman here that hadn't made the argument about fraud and waste and abuse. Uh, but when it comes um, uh, to this um, uh, uh, measure, I do believe uh, that we don't want to do anything that's going to affect people living with disabilities and we don't want to do anything, and I'm not trying to offer scare tactics uh, for seniors. I live with them. I am one. <laughs> so I certainly understand the plight. Uh, but with that, Mr. Chairman, um, let's don't repeal uh, uh, this thing and allow an increase in waste, fraud, and abuse. Mr. Mr. McGovern. No, and I would, um, I would just add that I'm, I'm ver very concerned, um, even with the Chairman's promise that somehow all these committees are going to redo all this work, that in the statement of principles that uh, this piece of paper that uh, you're replacing all these patient protections with, there is no mention uh, of protecting um, seniors um, with regard to the donut hole. Um, I, don't, I don't see any mention at all of that. And, um, uh, and I will tell you um, that I and I, I think many others here who have uh, been back in the districts uh, have talked to a lot of senior citizens, many, many, many of whom have benefited uh, from the at least the beginning of the closing of that of that donut hole, uh, and um, so I, I would uh, I would I would urge a, a strong yes vote on Mr. Hastings' uh, amendment because uh, uh, you know this has already begun. Uh, why in the world would you repeal it? Why in the world would you essentially raise taxes on senior citizens? Uh, so I support the uh, Mr. Hastings' amendment. Thank the gentleman for his comments, and uh, let me just say again that uh, if this committee decides to report out this rule, and we do proceed with consideration of it tomorrow as is scheduled on the House floor and uh, have this seven-hour debate next week, I am 
absolutely convinced that uh, the gentleman uh, who've just spoken, as well as others, will raise a wide range of issues. And I can assure you that um, the agenda that committees will face is not limited to these items that are included here. And that's one of the reasons that we have added in this resolution, in our uh, in, in the resolution, the um, the measure that Mr. Matheson uh, has, but, and so we will but the look forward that, to a debate on on this issue. But the I, fact, happy to yield yeah, to my friend. Thank you. But the fact that it's not included here does that mean it's not a priority? I mean, I assume these are your priorities, but uh, let me no just, mention of, uh, of 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 protecting senior citizens who fall into the donor. Let, let me just say, let me just say again that I know that there will be a full discussion on this, mm -hmm. and we'll have an opportunity to have. The committee chairman discuss their agenda and items that they will address. And obviously, as they proceed with the committee process, there are members who will raise this, and there will be deliberation in committees of jurisdiction. So I urge a no vote on the amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. And the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it. The uh, want a roll call. Mr. Hastings would like a roll call. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Excuse me. No. Scott. No. Aye. 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 No. Clerk will report the total. Further amendments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. I have Hastings. One more amendment and a comment um, uh, previous to that. Now that we are here uh, 12 hours, I compliment all of our, our colleagues and I uh, say to uh, uh, the new members of, of, of this distinguished committee. Um, that you no longer have time uh, uh, to get out of here. I asked you earlier today to tell you to don't start, but you, you did. You, you, and, and you haven't seen the pain yet. Uh, you just. Uh, the it, gentleman would yield. Would yeah, gentleman of yield? course, I'll yield to the chairman. Um, yesterday, I began my fourth decade of service in the United States House of Representatives, and uh, I have uh, never, in the years that I have served here seen known of a hearing to uh, extend for this amount of time, and I've never seen as many witnesses as we've had today. Now, I say that because while the gentleman seems to think that he's able to, by his words, direct these four new members to not consider leaving, I offer my comments to assure them that you will never again, you will never again, gentlemen, experience a day like you have over the past 12 hours. Want to make a bet? And I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that that's, I, I know that that is, uh, I, I've laid down the gauntlet and the challenge. Uh, I can tell you that uh, there were three Republican witnesses today who came before us, and I have yet to count the number of Democrats who have 25. testified. 25? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll gentlemen yield for just a moment. Twenty-five. Um, gentlemen yield for a moment. I think Mr. Hastings has yield for a moment. Yeah, I, you, I, I think th I thank the gentleman for yielding. Thank and you. I would just say, I mean, the, the reason for the interest in this is this is an enormous uh, bill. That. It may be a short bill, but it is probably the biggest bill that we will vote on in this Congress. And I appreciate uh, us ha taking the time to hear from all the members that, that wanted to speak on this. And I think uh, it was very reasonable that they did, given that this is a uh, multi-trillion-dollar bill that affects uh, almost every American. So uh, this is a bill of immense magnitude. Let not the brevity of the words disguise that. Just assure the, the gentleman that that is the reason that we were providing seven full hours of date. We'll debate. We'll have the three-hour layover, an hour for consideration on the rule. We'll have an hour for consideration of HRES 9 as well. And, uh, and no amendments. So we'll have, uh, excuse me? And no amendments. What about the Matheson oh, Amendment? Oh, what, what amendment? Okay, that, so uh, we have the Matheson that, Amendment. Yeah. And again, HRES 9 does provide uh, an assurance that we will see the committees proceed with their action. And I, I can tell you that that, in fact, will happen. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman, let me Mr. tell you Hastings. why. Let, yeah, I, I, I haven't gotten to my amendment. I hadn't finished my comment, but uh, I yield it to you and to Mr. Polis and then to Mr. McGovern and you. Please proceed. Mr. Chairman, um, I also commented earlier today that over the course of time, as a, a lawyer and judge, particularly when I was a juvenile judge, I advocated and was the governor's liaison to the Florida Supreme Court on the subject of televisions in the courtroom. Um, I began um, uh, the day by saying, over time, because of abuse um, uh, that 
I um, I began to feel and feel very strongly there should not be cameras in the courtroom, and I enumerated reasons that I won't go into. I think um, your intent by having cameras uh, in the Rules Committee is as pure as the driven snow. Um, I spoke earlier um, uh, with uh, a staffer, names aren't necessary, uh, she knows that I spoke to her about it. Your intent is transparent, and I believe that to be the case. But I also witnessed here today, and this is why I know we will have more 12-hour hearings and more witnesses than you have seen here today. We were the only game in town today. And the Senate is being the Senate. They won't be back until the 24th. So we were on CNN sometimes today, and we were on C-SPAN two or three or maybe both. And for that reason, what you saw here today, including yours truly, if we are going to be fair-minded, what you saw was people that know that we are on television. There were people that came in here and testified that would not have been here or today but for the fact that we were on television. Now, they had a right to be here. And many of them carried on uh, at length, and this is a committee where uh, it encourages persons uh, uh, to speak forthrightly and uh, no time limitations. I believe it's the only committee, um, although I served on the Intelligence Committee and we have great latitude there as well, but not the latitude that we have here at the Rules Committee. So you're going to see some more, not that you should be concerned, it's an honor and a privilege to serve on this committee. You will see more of the substantive legislation, you will come to know more of your colleagues, or than almost anybody as fast um, as you will or that came here uh, with you um, uh, that are uh, in other uh, committees. Uh, but I assure you uh, that it didn't take me but one day to conclude that I saw people come in here and play to the cameras. And I can tell you that that's going to happen more and more and more. Whether they had a right to or not, it's what's getting ready to become um, uh, uh, the rule of thumb. And it may come under the heading of transparency, and I uh, agree that that's the chairman's intent. But in the final analysis, what it's going to do is cause uh, for an awful lot of people just to come up here just so uh, that they can be seen and webbed and tweeted and whatever it is uh, that uh, modern people do. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the rule, make an order with appropriate waivers, amendment number 18 by Mr. Van Hollen of Maryland to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies that the repeal will not increase uh, the deficit by eliminating the appropriate amount, be it the $143 billion or the preliminary analysis of $230 billion as offered by CBO, um, and $1.2 trillion over 20 years in deficit savings achieved by the Affordable Care Act. You've heard the uh, gentleman's motion. Any further discussion? Mr. McGovern. I, I would just say, um, as Mr. Van Hollen said, um, I think very clearly, we're, we're at a dangerous point here if we're going to start to politicize the budget process. Uh, and if we're not going to pay attention to what we have, uh, the, the um, Congressional Budget Office analysis, as we have done under Republican and Democratic you know, control of Congress, um, as long as I know. And, um, you know, I mean, you guys are in control right now, um, and you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, but I don't think if we were in control, you would want uh, the chairman of the Budget Committee to come up with the numbers on his or her own. Uh, you know, this, is a, this is a process that, uh, this is, this is a, a neutral, uh, the CBO is neutral, uh, and they're the professionals, and, um, and we shouldn't go down the road of ignoring CBO and leaving it up to the Budget Committee to make whatever decisions they want to make in terms of what things cost. I think it's a very dangerous road we're going down. Any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the Hastings Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Those aye. Say no. Aye. No. Aye. Depending aye. on the knows have it. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Fox. No. Mr. Woodall. No. Nugent. No. Scott. No. Mr. Webster. No. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. Governor. Aye. Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Cole. Aye. Chairman. No, the clerk report the total. 
Yes, and the motion is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Polis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, a uh, point of personal privilege, I'd like to uh, introduce my brother, Jorian, who's in the room. The members of our caucus have met him, but I wanted to introduce him to the members of the committee. He Is came, he here all 12 hours? Uh, he, he, he took a little vacation. He came down to see me sworn in, which I, I did accomplish on the floor of the House. I'm very proud of that. Great accomplishment. Uh, yes, very proud. Not everyone does that. Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone does that. And uh, I'm happy that he's uh, got to see a typical day on the Rules Committee. So. <laughs> Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the rules to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 19 by Mr. Peters of Michigan to ensure that repeal of the Affordable Health Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies the repeal will not increase taxes on small businesses offering health insurance, including through the elimination of any tax credit as provided under the Affordable Care Act and will not increase costs for employers offering retiree benefits by eliminating the assistance provided to them under the Affordable Care Act to help maintain retiree health care benefits. Uh, Mr. Chairman, while... Um, the, um, the, while there are elements of this bill that I'm sure uh, people on both sides disagree on, um, I do worry uh, that uh, repealing uh, uh, the health care bill and the passage of H.R. 2 would actually increase taxes on, on small businesses uh, in a recession. Um, this would be a job-killing aspect uh, of the repeal. Uh, there may be other reasons and other aspects that uh, the majority desires to repeal, but specifically the small business tax credit uh, covers up to 35% of health care premiums, uh, which will eventually increase to up to 50%. And already up to 4 million small businesses are eligible for the credit uh, and, and are receiving this credit now. So the repeal of H.R. 2 uh, would lead to a large tax increase uh, on our small businesses and uh, what this amendment would simply do is ensure that we don't allow this job-killing measure to be implemented uh, without a certification that the repeal would not increase taxes on small businesses, uh, which I think is a critical uh, value that we have uh, on both sides of the aisle uh, with regard to ensuring that whatever we do with health care uh, reform, that it's good for small businesses, which are the backbone of America. Uh, and and I, I therefore make that motion and, and uh, move the question. Uh, the gentleman is absolutely right, and uh, obviously, as I addressed at the outset, small businesses are priority, and I look very much under HRES 9 to see the, um, this issue addressed, but I'm going to urge a no vote on the uh, gentleman's amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. Paying the chair, the no's have it. Aye. Roll call. Aye. Roll call vote. We roll call aye. vote. You like, you like a roll call yes. vote? Yes. Roll call vote, like please. Roll call. Clerk, call the roll. That went a little quick. No. Uh, Mr. Scott, no. Mr. Webster, no. Ms. Slaughter, aye. Mr. Miller, aye. Mr. Hayes, aye. Mr. Foley, aye. Mr. Drive, no. Mr. Hayes, aye. Clerk, report total. 48-6-9. The motion is out of here. The further amendments, Mr. Polis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 22 by Mr. Heinrich of New Mexico to ensure that repealing the Patient Protection and Affordable Health Care Act shall not take effect unless and until the Director of Office of Management and Budget, in consultation with the Director of the Congressional Budget Office, certifies to Congress that the repeals affected by such section will not shorten the life of the Federal Hospital Insurance Trust Fund, which the Patient Protection and Affordable Health Care Act extended uh, by 12 years. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think Mr. Heinrich made an excellent case before us. Uh, I also think in the interest of prudence and fiscal responsibility, uh, we uh, want to extend the Federal Hospital Insurance Trust Fund and not uh, effectively allow that to run out, putting the health care for our seniors at risk. Uh, and I hope that uh, the committee uh, chooses to make this amendment in order. Thank you very much. You heard the gentleman's motion. Any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs in the polis amendment. Those in favor will say aye. 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 No, no. no. Paying the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it. The motion is not agreed to. Roll call vote. Are there any please. further? Roll, roll, roll call vote, please, Mr. Chairman. Clerk, call the roll. <laughs> no. Mr. Will. No. Mr. Newton. No. Scott, no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. Governor. Aye. Mr. Hastings. Aye. Mr. Polis. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk, report the total. 48 And the motion is not agreed to. There are further amendments? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Polis. I move to amend the rule to make an order with appropriate waivers. Amendment number 21 by Mr. Welsh of Vermont to ensure the repeal of the Affordable Health Care Act shall not take effect until the date upon which CBO certifies the repeal will not increase cost sharing or otherwise reduce access to preventative health benefits such as mammograms, colonoscopies, and diabetes screening, including such benefits offered by private health plans or by Medicare provided by sections 1004 and 4104 of the Affordable uh, Health Care Act. Uh, Mr. Chairman, these are cost-saving measures, making sure that uh, Americans have access 
uh, to early uh, identification of these conditions have uh, been proven uh, to reduce costs over time, not to mention the uh, lives that can be saved uh, and prolonged. Uh, the cost of, of later diagnoses once these conditions become symptomatic are, are much greater to bear for the private sector, for taxpayers, whoever's bearing them. Uh, and I hope that this amendment is made in order. Heard the gentleman's uh, motion. Any further discussion? Not the vote occurs in the Polis Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those no, no. The pin the chair, the no's Mr. Happened. Chair, a recorded vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Moss. No. Mr. Will. No. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Weather. No. Mr. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. Governor. Aye. Mr. Mason. Aye. Mr. Polis. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Clerk will report the total. Four yeas, six nays. The motion is not agreed to. Further amendments? If not, the vote occurs on the motion of the gentlewoman from Grandfather Community. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. Yeah, the ayes have it. The ayes Never have it. The roll. motion is agreed. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Fox. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Nugent. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Webster. Aye. Mr. Lauder. No. Mr. Governor. No. Mr. Hastings. No. Mr. Polis. No. Chairman. Aye. Clerk report the total. And the motion is agreed to. And let me, before we close, uh, just ask all of my colleagues who have served here longer than two days to extend a round of applause to the four new members who have joined us on the Rules Committee and to say how much we appreciate their uh, forbearance and uh, the hard work and their dedication by uh, sticking with us and to say that, um, as I've said throughout this uh, entire 12-hour period plus now, uh, we obviously share the goal of ensuring that every single American has access to quality, affordable health insurance, and we are determined to do everything that we can to uh, make sure that it, that does happen, and we're going to have a rigorous debate beginning tomorrow morning, first thing, and then it will proceed with a three-day layover into next week, and I will be managing this rule on the floor tomorrow. And I will be managing uh, HR 2. Uh, well, we got one rule. One rule. One rule. I thought, oh, you have structure. Excuse me? HRS. No, it's all. Well, but we've got one rule that we're going to be considering, and then next week we will have HRS 9 that will be considered uh, from our original jurisdiction. So well, I'll be managing both. So you want, you want to manage the rule tomorrow, and Mr. Right. McGovern will manage HRS 9? That one of them is closed and one of them is structured. Right, so the structure, we, we made Mr. Mathis' yeah. amendment in order, as, as you know, uh, and uh, that made it a, a structured rule. And the closed rule is a straight up or down vote, as well as the provision that allows for the addressing the issue that we recessed on earlier today. You mean Mr. Sessions, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you all very much, and uh, without objection, the committee stands adjourned. Thank you.
So an end to the day-long House Rules Committee meeting. Members of the committee approving the rules so the House can take up the repeal of the health care law tomorrow. Under the rules, up to seven hours of floor debate are allowed on the repeal measure. A final vote is scheduled for next Wednesday, that's January 12th. We'll have live coverage of the House tomorrow when members gavel in at 9 a.m. Eastern on C-SPAN. Coming up tonight on C-SPAN 2, briefings by Senate Republican leaders on their agenda for the 112th Congress. After that, remarks by Senate...